What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize Apex Legends Season 21 for the best possible performance. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, first of all, Apex has had a couple of changes, most notably currently to do with DirectX 12. So, if you're going to be using it, the launch options have changed. Find Apex, right click, choose properties, and in general, launch options, there's a couple of things you should stick in here. In the description down below, you'll find it these two little commands. The first one uncaps your frames, and the second one skips the intro video. Previously, if you wanted to enable DirectX 12 mode to test it out, you'd use this command over here. However, with the most recent update, Season 21, this command is now this. Slightly different, but it accomplishes the same thing, so there's been a couple of changes to the DirectX 12 mode, and we'll get into that kind of performance later on. For now though, I won't enable DirectX 12, and I'll show you how to optimize the game for the best possible performance in either setup. So, now that we've uncapped our frames, let's get straight into the actual game itself. Hopping in game, let's get a quick baseline for performance, and I'll leave everything on the default of pretty much maxed out. I'm using an NVIDIA 3080 Ti at 2K, so performance should be pretty good. You'll see performance details in the top left. Hopping into a brand new game, I'm getting a solid 114-ish, flying down from the sky, and as soon as we get on the ground, with hopefully a little bit of action, it'll go from 140-ish to, let's see, actually 130, 150. It's jumping around quite a bit, but it's really not that bad at all. This is, of course, a competitive game, so it's highly optimized out of the gate, but of course, we can do a bit more in order to get our FPS way, way higher. So, this is DirectX 11, everything maxed out, 2K on a 3080 Ti. Let's go ahead and optimize the game itself. So, on the main menu, click the settings wheel on the bottom right, then settings, followed by video at the very top, and we'll start with the display settings. Performance shouldn't vary too much between borderless windowed and full screen mode, especially nowadays, but on some systems, you may see a performance slash input latency improvement when you choose full screen instead. I'll just be playing on borderless windowed. Aspect ratio and resolution should definitely match your monitor and say native right next to them. Brightness and field of view are your preference, while field of view technically affects performance. It's all really down to how you play the game and how you enjoy it. The same goes for field of view ability scaling and of course the sprint view shake, which I'd recommend putting to minimum for a slight tactical advantage. Scrolling down here, we get to the actual juicy settings. First of all, these things should definitely be turned off unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and the bottom half of your screen doesn't match up. Then NVIDIA Reflex low latency. If you have an NVIDIA GPU, I'd recommend enabling this here. And if you have a really low powered CPU, set this to enabled plus boost. Obviously, AMD users won't have this option. Then we'll skip over adaptive resolution all the way to anti-aliasing. I'd recommend leaving this off for the best performance. Texture streaming budget should usually be set to around 4 gigs for a better looking game, but of course you can lower this even more if you need more performance. You can put it all the way down to very low, and the next step is none, which you should put it on if you're running a super low end system or you just need the absolute most performance. Anisotropic filtering should have barely any impact on performance and leave it all the way on 16x. However, if you'd like, you can set it down to probably 2x, although it's not going to make too much of a difference at all. When it comes to getting the absolute most performance out of your system, you're probably going and want to lower the rest of these settings all the way down to the absolute minimum. Sun, ambient occlusion, disabled. Sun, shadow coverage, detail, both on low. Spot shadow detail, disabled. Volumetric lighting, off. Dynamic shadows, off. And the rest of these all the way down to the absolute lowest. Now, of course, this is going to give you pretty much the best performance possible, which is great if you're going for a competitive edge. But if I simply head back to the main menu after applying, you'll see that the game looks uh, less than great. Let's leave it at that. This is going to give you the best possible performance, where if you're a competitive player, this is going to give you the biggest edge. So I'm firing into a solo game once more, enabling my overlay. You'll see what kind of performance we get now. Then we got flying into game, we're already at a solid 140 and it's barely moving anywhere. Frame times should have also probably greatly improved. Let's go ahead and hop straight back down. Still sitting at a super solid 140, jumping to 190 closer to the ground. We're now at a solid 200 and let's see, 200 FPS plus minus. So there's been a pretty good improvement. And as for how things look, it's not too terrible. But of course, performance is absolutely everything, especially if you're going for a competitive edge. Running into different areas, we're even touching probably 300, which is the engine's maximum, meaning this is going to give you the best, most stable performance throughout all of your competitive gameplay. But of course, this game doesn't exactly look the best. Seeming that we've dropped everything down to the lowest possible settings and getting the best possible performance, which we can make even better in just a bit, what happens if you want the game to still look relatively good but give you good performance? Well, let's head back to settings, video, and scroll down here once more. First of all, raising anisotropic filtering all the way to 16 will give you a slightly better looking game. Spot shadow detail, I'd recommend putting to low. 
sun shadow coverage to high, model detail to high and effects detail to medium. In this update, we also get the new map detail option here, which we can set to low or high, which changes how the environment is dressed and looked. Having this set to low should mean slightly less foliage and grass and things like that, meaning better performance overall. But if you want a better looking game, this is something you can go ahead and raise. I'll leave it on low for now. And also we'll be raising the texture streaming budget to around four gigs, which should work with most, if not all graphics cards. We'll apply and head back to the menu where you can immediately see a huge improvement in quality. Of course, let's see how our performance changes with this, so we'll hop back into solo. Back in the sky, a solid 130, landing in the same zone as before, 130 still, up to 160, and landing 200-ish, 180. Let's see where it moves around here. Yeah, so roughly 200 frames, which is still huge. It's not exactly 300, but the game does look infinitely better, especially if you're a more casual player rather than a super competitive one. So with that, we pretty much optimized the game settings. You now know how to get the most out of the game and get the most out of it while it still looks very good. But there's something we can do for even better performance, especially if you're going for a even bigger competitive edge. Let's go ahead and find out how to do that. So what you'll do is open up a new file browser. I'll use start and E to pull up this one and we'll go ahead and navigate to C users, your username, followed by saved games. Then inside of here, respawn, apex and local. Then in here, you'll find video config.txt that you can open with any text editor. Pulling it up, we have all of the graphics options in game here. And on top of this, even more that we can customize further. In here, we can either customize things manually, lowering them even further, for which you'll find some suggestions in the description down below to go ahead and replace on this file. Or you can find a pre-configured file online, like the one that I showed in my previous video, albeit a little bit outdated, the color tweak tips, Apex optimization, where it's got some pretty good optimized settings. If you'd like to use something like this in the description down below, head across to the GitHub link and click raw over here. Then we can copy everything and replace everything in the video config file here. Once we've done this, we can save it and close it. Just remember this does change your default resolution here. Mine was 2560 by 1440. So I'll correct that and save it. Closing this and firing up the game once more, we should see yet another improvement. The performance you can expect with a custom tweak like this should be ever so slightly better than dropping pretty much everything down to low in your graphics settings. 130 up in the sky and 160 dropping in. We're now getting a solid 250-ish. So again, it should be very similar to the performance slash competitive settings that I showed you earlier, though this time a little bit more consistent, maybe. Anyways, there's only so far that you can push your game. Now restarting the game with the DirectX 12 launch option, you can see my overlay says D3D12, which means we're actually using DirectX 12. And of course, we're using our ultra competitive optimization. So everything's all the way down on low with the custom config tweaks as well. Let's go ahead and hop into a solo game once more just to see what performance is like. And then after that, we'll do it one final time with everything maxed out, this time in DirectX 12. Flying in once more, we're at 140-ish, 150. Dropping in, 130. But it should jump to 170, not bad. And landing here, once again, jumping all the way up to around 170, 180. Running around, it should be a little bit higher. I don't think it'll reach 300 as it did in DirectX 11 mode, but this is still pretty good regardless. Yeah, 170, 160, not too bad, not too good. This is, however, a beta, so it's bound to change and get better as time goes on. Let's go ahead and crank everything all the way back up to the highest settings just to see what it performs like there. So changing everything back up to where it was before as such. Everything is maxed out once more and let's see what kind of performance we get in game. Now we're flying it at a solid 120-ish and we should be able to make it back to the same spot, but we're now getting 140-ish and landing 160, 170 again. So performance, I think with everything maxed out is a little bit better on DirectX 12, but of course it really comes down to your hardware and it'll be different for pretty much everyone. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this optimization guide. If you'd like to get even more out of your system, check the description down below for a Windows 10, 11 and NVIDIA optimization guides and of course anything else that may be useful so anyways hopefully you found this video useful thank you for watching my name's been troubleshoot and i'll see you all next time ciao